back you guys it has been literally almost a month since i have brought you guys to the beautiful garden everything is beautiful growing um my garden's not as put together as the previous years but it's still a beautiful place to come and enjoy all the blooms and all the veggies that are growing I honestly was thinking about splitting my garden tours up, one for the main garden, one for the flower garden, but since this is our first one and there's so much going on, this one's going to be a little bit longer than normal, and so we're going to do both main and picking flower garden today, so stay tuned. All right, you guys, when you walk in, this is the archway, and I'm going to be honest, I have not planted the archway out for the red noodle beans and this is why. Do you see these zinnias growing? I'm going to use these in my flowers. But the peas did not do very well, but I've been picking them and putting them in my bouquets and they've actually brought a bunch of greenery into this. But this weekend, we are going to get out here, we are going to clean the archway up, and we are going to get my red noodle beans, Kajari melons, and possibly some other stuff growing to get this archway completely covered and whimsical when you walk through it. You guys, here is my dahlia bed. And I cannot wait to show you these flowers right here. All right, you guys. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is comparison to my head. This thing is magnificent. It's the biggest flower I've ever grown. And quite honestly, I think that growing dahlias has me completely hooked. And I would like to have hundreds of them now. So we'll see what next year brings. All right, this dahlia is... Um, Kevin Floodlight, that's the ginormous one. I don't know if you can kind of see the difference in the sizes here, but this one right here is the Painted Madame. She is glorious. I have picked at least three off these two plants right here. Absolutely beautiful in bouquets. This one's another Kevin Floodlight, the same as that yellow one. It's fixing to bloom. This one right here is Creme de Crumb. It's like a two-toned purple. Absolutely gorgeous. Super excited about that one. Cannot wait until it blooms. Then we're going to walk over here where we planted the potatoes and the corn. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, that was a big flop. The corn is finally coming up through the potatoes, but we got so much rain that the potatoes just grew up way too big and completely almost smothered the corn out, but you can see it coming up, but it's kind of lanky. Next year, we're going to do it differently, but it was an experiment. It was um, a lesson that I learned. That yes these are good companion plants but they literally need to be planted in a different manner um so let's show you what's going on in this bed all right first off this one this one and this one these are three dahlias and these are let's see this one is a modo dahlia and it's a pink and yellow and then this is a purple dahlia these two are right here can't see what the name of it is this one's not looking too good see how it's kind of wilted there but that second one's doing okay so I may have to come in here and kind of um, pinch that back that way it will branch out but as you can see the the potatoes are starting to flop and start turning so these are going to be ready to dig up and once I dig up the potatoes, all the corn that's this size is probably not going to do well. So when we harvest the potato, I'll probably go ahead and pull the corn or try to save it if I can. But if I can't, that's okay. Like I said, it was just an experiment. It's something I learned new this year. Then we're going to go back here. And as you can tell, 
this bed has changed quite a bit. Um, the Dusty Miller right there that I had planted all along the front, it didn't thrive. It was just, it struggled the entire time. So I went ahead and I planted a dahlia right there. And then these are my daisies that are fixing to bloom. There's another dahlia, another dahlia right there. We still have our Rebecca. And I got a purple and a pink speedwell planted. And then right back there in the back is the liatris. But you guys, my goats, they got in here and they mowed down that liatris. So I'm probably not gonna get a lot of blooms, but if I remember correctly last year, along the highways, I did see some wild liatris growing. So I may have to be going and foraging some. We will just see. Here is the bed with my radishes. Look at this. This bed is amazing. There are so many beds that are amazing. This right here is my first stalk. Cannot wait until I can pick that. You guys, <laughs> this bed of the marigolds planted with my squash has been amazing. I have not. Usually by, I don't know if you guys can see me. Hold on, let me fix you. Usually by the end of June, we are covered in squash bugs. We were covered in squash bugs on the cucumbers, on the squash, even other parts of the, you know, veggies in the garden. I have yet, and I'm probably <laughs> gonna jinx myself, but I have yet to find a squash bugs, especially on my squash that is surrounded with the marigolds. So. I'm gonna say it's a win-win and it, the experiment works. So you might wanna try it in your own gardens this year. And while we're here at this bed, we're gonna go ahead and harvest all of these um, radishes. The white ones are super hot. So I'm probably gonna be giving them away cause I don't like spicy things. But I wanna show you how big the red radishes are. Right, I don't know if you guys can see that. Look how big this thing is. It's huge absolutely huge so let's get to um harvesting all the radishes watch as the moonlight creeps into the room you're in the headlights i want to feel the way Remember the summer We chased the morning light We ran for hours You were always on my mind we Try to make it out alive But we let it slip away If we only had a second shot We'd find another way Oh, 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 a bacon squash bug. Watch as the moonlight. All right, you guys, I know I look kind of silly with my little fan, but it is super hot out here and I had to have some air because there is none blowing. I don't know if you guys or if I'm even going to leave it in the video or not because I found a squash bug and I ended up killing it. It was really funny and I tried to kill it on a video but this just goes to show that I found a squash bug right there. It was not on my squash so I really feel like the squash being surrounded by the marigolds has really helped for the fact that there was a squash bug in the bed 
close by but was not on the other side of the marigolds. I really feel like that is what's helping them stay off of my squash. But who knows, later on we may end up finding them. But right now, it's helping keep the squash bugs off of my squash. All right, look how nice and tidy this bed looks now. Now this will give you more of a sense on how the marigolds are growing. I just came here and cut a, oop, cut a big leaf out of there. I'm thinking about maybe possibly cutting leaves out of here, but I don't know. But right now, just being surrounded with the marigolds, I feel like has completely helped detour the squash bugs. And I'm really happy with the outcome so far. But you guys, isn't that bed so pretty now? Look at the dirt. That dirt that I put in these beds this year was amazing. Loving how it is looking. All right, on to this bed. Another squash with marigolds. We have these kind of daisies here. I will never buy or plant them again. They have struggled the entire time that they were in the bed. Look, they look awful. I'm constantly coming out here deadheading all the time. It doesn't do anything. They just completely struggle. I like my beds to have color throughout the bed, but it is what it is. There's nothing I can do. So what's in this bed is I have spinach. This is long standing, standing spinach. It's probably time to pull and reseed. My lettuce, we've had so much rain and the, the temperatures have been so mild for this time of year it's crazy so none of it has bolted yet but it is probably getting close and then i have this squash with the beautiful marigolds and then back there is i planted i don't know if you can see this these little things right here i planted a whole row of freesia but i only have like five that come up so but doesn't this just look beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous. This is that bed where we planted that row of daisies. You guys, the daisies were amazing last year. And this year, they've not done anything. They have struggled so bad. No matter where I planted them. You can see a bunch of them have done this. And it doesn't matter. Like I've lost one in here that was planted. But look at this one. This one's beautiful. So I just... I don't think it's anything I done. I honestly think it was like the batch of daisies that I got this year because I noticed whenever I bought them, some of them didn't even look like they had been planted in the pot very well. So I think it's just for me getting them. Um, this is my turnips. I didn't get in here and thin. As you can see, so this is just a mess. I'm probably not going to get no big turnips, but I'm going to use the turnip greens because I really like to saute them and feed the goats. We will have to do better at doing that. I just kind of sprinkled them and I think I did it a little bit too heavy, but it really fills out that bed and makes it look beautiful. Then we're going to pan right over here. This is the bed with my beets. The bedding sunflowers right here is where the pot choy was. And then this back here, I've never ever grown kohlrabi. But look, 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 look. I'm super excited. Look, it's actually bone up, you guys. I can't wait to try this. I heard it's really good. So hopefully it will continue to grow and get a little bit bigger. This is another row of marigolds with another uh, squash. All right, can you guys see that? This is the four beds that we just had a tour on. It's got the color. It's beautiful. And we are going to end up reseeding this with some more uh, radishes. Absolutely love it. This is my, ba my bed of ageratum. I just started cutting off of it because they are coming into full bloom and I'll show you exactly how the blooms look. Okay, this is how the blooms look. This is like a light purple 
And then if you come over here, you can't really see it, but the purple is a deep purple versus a really light purple. The camera just doesn't pick it up, but there's like a really light purple, a white, and then a dark purple. All right, right here, I've had a tomato that died that I gotta get in there and clean that hole out. Again, we've had tons of rain, so it looks like I've had some water wash up. I've got to get in here and tie these tomatoes up. Look, see how that one's fell down with all the high winds last night? I'm working on it, you guys. I will get caught up and get back on my tomatoes uh, pruning and keeping them up on the trail. I don't know if you can see the row of cabbage here. This is my green and my purple. Some of them are really beautiful. Some of them have been eaten. Some of them the weed whacker got. <laughs> but they are starting to put on heads, so I'm really happy about that. Here is my peppers. Just picked that one up because it got blown over. And kind of put that little garden light in there. But look at here. Look how loaded. That pepper plant is completely loaded, just like these down here. I don't know if you can see that here. Oops. See, beautiful. They've all got peppers on them. Cannot wait to try. Cannot wait to try these gypsy peppers. They're the sweet red, yellow, orange little ones like that. So, I bought a bag of them at the store the other day. Absolutely amazing. Love them. Here is that row of salvia. See how some of those daisies, they just keep... See how those daisies just keep struggling? I, I just don't know what to do. I mean, here's another one. Those things, those things are not cheap. They're like $5 a piece. So, I've spent... A pretty good penny on daisies and then you come over here and you have some that are just like thriving and doing well look at this one absolutely gorgeous I don't get it I don't know what's happened Here's um, the other row of tomatoes, as you can see. I have gotten in here and pruned these up really well. Um, for some reason, I'm seeing some leaves curl. I don't know if that's something I need to worry about or not. I think I'll just keep an eye on it. And if it continues to get worse, I think I'll just chop it off. Because really, at the bottom of this fence down, I really want it my tomato plants to be bare you can kind of see how I did this one how a lot of it is bare see and that's how I want all the rest of them to be so it's not a big deal if I need to trim that one up but that's the only one I think that I've seen some major leaf curling I've got to get this one staked up to the fence a volunteer calla lily I got my green beans and my um, tail. <laughs> I had to remember what I was saying. growing here. Absolutely excited. This bed hasn't been filling out as much as I would like, but it is coming a long ways. See, see these tomatoes right here, how they're on the ground. I've got to get them up on the trellis, but I did just come in here and prune all of these up, stake those up, so I've got some work to do today. This right here, this row, was supposed to be, I don't know, this whole row right here was supposed to be a whole row of asters. Every one of them died. I mean, that's a weed, weed. But this is the only aster, and it looks like it's starting to put on some blooms that survived. I'm kind of heartbroken because I really worked hard trying to get those asters planted in the ground 
for them to all die. It's just a bunch of weeds I've got to get in here and I've got to get pulled, but that's okay. Like I said, this year, you guys, I'm not going to stress over not being perf perfect or having perfection. Um, I'm really trying to enjoy the process of my garden. And speaking of that, do you guys see the fence line? Do you see it? It's amazing, ain't it? Well, let's see if we can get the whole entire effect. I don't know if I can get a good shot of it. See, absolutely beautiful. Loving it, loving it how it's looking, loving the effect of the petunias on the fence line. Absolutely love it. I can't wait till they are hanging down really low. It's starting to get dark. So we're going to try to run to the picking flowers and do a little tour and then hopefully I'll be able to get this um, video out for you guys this week. Alright, where are we going to start? These are the, some of the lilies that I have planted. It's my first year planting lilies. Really excited about getting to grow them but you guys this whole bed is supposed to be full I don't understand they're just not coming up like I was hoping so I've got about three or four more bags left in the refrigerator I just don't know if all the rain if all the rain that we have they've rotted not really for sure what's going on but at least we'll have about a dozen to pick from and then we're going to pan right over here and look at this. All of my beautiful zinnias. There's three rows. There's one, two, three rows. This one is the purple prince. And these cameras never do it justice. This one right here is the polar bear white. Absolutely gorgeous. This is a cupcake blend, and you guys know, this whole rest of it is supposed to be a cupcake, and they don't really come out cupcakey. I think just a very select few has come out, like this one. When they come out, they're beautiful, but not all of them. I mean, look, none of them, I mean, there's a bunch of them that look like that. So I'm hoping as they mature they'll do better. Not really for sure what's going on with this little guy. He may just be getting pulled out because it's really struggling. It looks pretty bad. These are supposed to be a, a lilac. Um, but it's also, look at the difference. All this, all these, this one, this one, this one's all supposed to be the same. Look at the difference in the color and then you go over here to this one it's kind of like a magenta it's really crazy how different they are and then this is my I've got my cactus blends here so we have this red cactus absolutely gorgeous and this I don't know, it almost looks like a sunset. I wish the camera did the colors justice. And then we have the yellow cactus zen. Very pretty. And then you pan over here and you just have these this gorgeous, gorgeous orange cactus. But see the kind of they have kind of like a different color, some of them. That one looks kind of weird. <laughs> and then these are the pink Sonorda cactus sins. This one's more of a peachy color on the cactus Sonorda. And then you come back here and you see how they are more cactusy here. Almost looks like a dahlia. Absolutely beautiful. This is a queen lime uh, blush. These right here are the orange. Absolutely love this color. I wish they were all kind of like this. 
absolutely gorgeous. And see how it, it kind of fades to this almost antique color? Really pretty. I don't know if you can see these. But maybe you can tell this has kind of got like a purple underlay in the flower. It's really pretty. And then you come over here and you have like this. I think this is supposed to be a red, but it almost looks maroon. Very pretty. And then we have our lime zinnias right here. Very pretty. These are ready to be pulled. I'll be cutting, deadheading quite a bit of them, but very pretty. Love the zinnias, the new colors that I've got this year. This right here is a row of my basil. I'm pretty sure that this is spruce basil, cinnamon basil, which is absolutely gorgeous and smells good. We have, I had to come in here and reseed these because these died. Um, but this is the purple opal basil. And then I reseeded it with the lemon, Mrs. Myers lemon basil. And then this was also the lime or lemon basil, but there's some cinnamon basil tucked in there because some of that died. We've got a bed of gladiolas. Some of them look like they are struggling. I think it's because we've had so much rain. But I do have one that's fixing to bloom. Super excited. And I've already looked in here. And I think this one's going to be a white. This right here is my Gumfrina. Nope. Not my Gumfrina. This is... This is my Celosia Coxcomb. This is pink plume and then back there is the plumus mix i should have thinned some of these out but the day that i planted them it was starting to rain and i said that i would come back and so i think i'm going to end up coming in here kind of snipping it to at least two or i just might let it grow i mean if you look at this one it's absolutely gorgeous but it's kind of laying down but it's really pretty. And then here is the first row succession planting of sunflowers. I don't know if you can tell, but you can kind of see it like stair stepped. I've already cut so many off right here from here back. The second is here, third, and then these did not take. So I just seeded them. This front is seeded with this back, and then I just came in this week and seeded this one. I'm about to come in here and burn holes on this row. And instead of doing it two or three succession, because now we're really gearing up, everything's coming, we're going to just start planting an entire row. And I think there's 120 sunflowers that I can plant in each of these rows. Look how beautiful. I just look so pretty. All right. Oh no, something's the dang cats. I'm telling you, they get in here. They get in here, and they lay on my stuff, and they break my stuff, and it makes me so mad. This right here is my Gumfrina. There's like a whole mix. There's like orange and red, and then back there in the back right here is the purple and white. And then I did seed some Cosmos. All of this is Cosmos, there's like a, a strawberry lemonade, a mix, and then there's like a double click back there in the back. This right here is my, um, looks like something's ate that one. Huh, there was one there. Gophers, I'm going to guess. Anyways, this is my Yarrow. I have just a mix of yarrow so it's going to be all kind but it's like white pinks purples all kinds of really pretty color um this is some more coxcombs but it's a different kind than what this is uh this right here is my status i've never grown status but man look at that isn't that crazy 
I don't know if you can see the stalks. Oh, I have a bee blowing around me. I'm allergic to bees. I hope it don't sting me. So, very pretty. Stalks are just coming. So, got a pretty little bee flying around. Really happy about that. Uh, this right here, you guys, is another succession of gladiolas. I just tried to tuck them in anywhere I could find them. And then, this is the bed of... Uh, Lysianthus that I planted last year and it overwintered and it is starting to put on blooms. If you can see that, it is starting to put on blooms. Here's a little bit better. I don't know, this one looks kind of dead. Hmm. I mean, I've got quite a few blooms. Not a whole bed like I had last year, but I'm going to get quite a few clippings. Here is some more gladiolas. Here's one that's coming up. I'm really excited about that. We have these right here that are fixing to bloom. I don't know if you can tell. So pretty. I think this is a white. I kind of peek in there. So this one is going to be ready to pick this week and go into a bouquet because when the first two or three sets uh, buds break open they are ready to be harvested where you can get a good vase life so super excited about that and then you can just come right over here if you can see my snapdragons or the snapdragon roll the white ones are i think the polar white so I tried to color block them. So this is all the white and then you get to here and this is all the apple blossom. And then this is tequila sunrise and then this is the midnight purple. The tequila sunrise is the one I'm very disappointed. It's very short. Like some of these stalks on these are almost two feet tall and could get even bigger. And these look anywhere from 12 to 18 inches. And I read on the packages that they were to get tall, so I'm not 100% sure what's going on. But do you see that cluster? Isn't that gorgeous? Just absolutely gorgeous. The apple blossom. There's quite a few of them. I cannot wait to harvest those this, this week and put them in some bouquets. I put this... This netting on my snapdragons because last year they just all flopped everywhere and they were crazy and I could they were just deformed and I couldn't really get a good um, flower for my bouquets. This is um, some straw flower. I do have some that has bloomed. Love it. Love it. So pretty. This whole row was supposed to be that color. Over here is a mix, and I really, really like this color that's come up. And it's kind of more like a pinky. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like a pink, like almost a um, pink lemonade. So um, this one's kind of like a maroon color. So we have, have lots and lots of colors. We do have this. The color I don't like, which is the yellow, but I think if it gets paired with like the dark snapdragons down there, I think it may bring out the color. So I think it's going to be really pretty. We'll go look at some of the sunflowers that are actually blooming. All right, you guys, we have a, a white light sunflower. Um, we just have an orange sunflower. Some of them are really tiny. Um, not for sure what this one is because it's kind of got these the branching and these are all supposed to be single stem. So I'm not for sure why I've got a bunch of this branching going on. But hey, if it blooms and it's pretty, it's okay. These are kind of cracking open as you can kind of see that. So this would be almost ready to harvest. I've already harvested all of these but this is left and it's just now starting to open but this right here is the new variety of pro cut peach absolutely gorgeous this camera does not give it justice it literally has an iridescent peach color to them just very dainty beautiful love it 
but everybody is sold out. I can't get any more seeds. So I think I may have about 25 more seeds left. And then that's it. Loving this double um, petaled sunflower. Not for sure what kind that is. But it looks like all of these. All of these are. I want to say it's almost like. Um, green burst. I think that's what these are. Are the green burst pro cuts. And then we have all of these that are fixing to open up. And then them that started. So there's at least four weeks worth of harvesting sunflowers here. All right, you guys, I really hope that you enjoyed the garden tours. They're not perfect, but I'm really, really happy with the way that everything is coming together in the main garden and in my actual picking flowers. And this week, I'm gonna try really, really hard to bring you guys along to harvesting the flowers and foraging for fillers and for more flowers for our bouquets and then going along with me to make our market bouquets my friend goes to the Oatmoggy market and she takes my blooms and sells them for me and we just have a really good uh, collaboration for her booth and for my blooms so stay tuned and hopefully you guys will be able to come along with me as we harvest make some bouquets and send them to the market or this weekend and as always thank you guys for watching until the next video god bless